a uh, very good evening all of you so today let's discuss a question from the orbital diagrams which has appeared in your csir for in 2014 if you have already watched my videos on orbital diagrams just pause the video and try to solve this question as it is very simple you just have to identify what kind of configuration it is and then apply the uh, given options if not then just do watch my video and then try to solve this particular question okay the question says in its electronic spectrum the vanadium complex is given it exhibits two absorption bands okay and the correct assignment of these bands are right this, these are the options given now you can actually eliminate two options if you know that what is the lowest energy energy uh, state for this particular configuration so just look at the configuration it is vanadium with plus three state so vanadium is actually d3s2 if you remove three electrons it becomes d2 so what you have to do you have to draw the orbital diagram of d2 configuration and i have already yesterday shown you so i will draw again okay this is my previous uh, class explanation where i have drawn my d2 uh, orbital diagram okay and in that d2 orbital diagram you can see what is the ground energy state it is triplet t1gf okay and where do you find triplet t1gf it is there in the option a as well as in the option c okay so you can eliminate option b and d see just that's what i have explained you yesterday that d2 the reverse of d2 is d3 where you will find a2g as the ground state if anywhere you get confused that this is a2 and this is t2 definitely you'll think option is either b or d so it is very important for you to understand uh, to actually remember what is the ground state of a particular configuration that's the reason i gave this shortcut do get perfect in this shortcut to actually solve the question so now we know that this is the ground state and they are given two different transitions options are very simple uh, they could be a little difficult too but uh, i'm happy that the options are very simple there are no exceptions or anything else here to explain simply you just look at the transitions triplet t1gf to triplet t2gf that is your very first transition this particular transition okay so triplet t1gf to triplet t2gf is your first particular transition and triplet t1gf to triplet t1gp triplet t1gf to triplet t1gp this is your second particular transition okay so these are the two possible transitions the third transition is a forbidden transition because it is from t to a so the different states it is not uh, allowed transition only when the states are same it is a possible transition so there are only two possible transitions over here if they ask you total number of transitions you should write three but if they ask you what are allowed transitions then you should write only two transitions okay as the transition always starts from the ground state and it goes to the one where the same state is present but not the other states okay so there are two possible transitions and whatever we are seeing over there that matches with your option a so directly you can tell that a is your right option so why not c c you can look here that the first thing is same new one transition is same but new two transition here t1 g is given and here t2 g is given just there is a difference of one and two over here you should concentrate okay if, if is it a one or two okay that you have to concentrate so easily you can tell that your option a is your right answer such a simple way to score uh, marks in csir today i will teach you another question of the day it's been a long time i am not teaching question of the day that will be more like mathematics rather than chemistry indeed it is chemistry but yes there is a lot of maths in it so whoever is like has not read these kind of questions i request them to please read this particular chapter in which i think there are around 10 to 15 formulae if you are perfect in those formulae definitely you are going to score four marks in your csir exam so this is the strategy you have to actually you know follow to qualify the csir exam never leave such kind of simple questions which appears in the exam uh, which you can solve in less time and in a easy way the formula are also very easy to remember I'll, I'll teach you for a set of 10 absorbed points the mean is 8 and the variance is 0 0.0 standard deviation and and the coefficient of variation of the data are respectively you are given with the four options okay so what you have to find standard deviation now i will directly tell you what is the standard deviation formula 
standard deviation is denoted by sigma and it is nothing but your square root of variance. Square root of variance is nothing but your standard deviation. And you can see in the question that the variance is given as 0.04. Now the square root of 0.04 is nothing but 0.20. Okay. 0.20 is your answer. If you look at the options, uh, 0.20 is present only here. Uh, they did not even confuse you by giving this in any other option. So even if you do not know the next formula of coefficient of variation, if you have forgotten, you can directly mark C as a right option. Uh, if you know that your standard deviation is no, nothing but the square root of variance. Okay. Uh, so this was a four marks question in your June 2014 CSIR. So I request you to please do not leave this kind of questions as they are very scoring provided you just have to put a little effort, a half an hour or one hour preparation is more than enough for this kind of data handling chapters. Okay. And anyways, I will tell you the coefficient of variation uh, formula. Coefficient of variation is nothing but your uh, sigma by mu. Okay. Coefficient of variation is nothing but the standard deviation divided by mean. This is your standard deviation and this is nothing but mean. Now, if you look at the question, the standard deviation uh, value is nothing but 0 0.2. Okay. So, whatever you have got here, the standard deviation value that you have to substitute, that is 0 0.2 or 0 0.20. 0 it is not a significant figure. Okay. And your mean value is 8. Okay. If you want to write 0, you can write. Now, if you solve this, it comes out to be, um, what will you get? 0. 0.025 yeah 0 0.025 so but they have asked you the percentage like the options are in percentage so the percentage of this will be nothing but 2.5 percent see such a simple thing which appeared in your CSIR for 4 marks so never leave this kind of questions try to solve you know you should select the easy topics which are coming for your 4 marks and try to be perfect in those particular topics that will be very helpful for your exam. Right? Thank you.